Well, well let's talk about uh, the op-ed. I mean, what about this that. explosive op-ed in the New York Times, uh, Newt? We, we know that... What's explosive about it? Well, it's just the fact that I mean, the New York Times is, look, printed this, an op-ed that's anonymous uh, as, as a way to just trash the president again. I mean, we know that the New York Times wants oh, to see please. the president impeached. Who wrote the op-ed? Dozens of administration officials are denying that they Who penned cares? this piece. <laughs> Do you think we'll ever find out, Some, or do you think this is just from the New York Times? Could it actually be possible that the New York Times wrote this? Anything is possible. I suspect somebody wrote it. I mean, first of all, I think the New York Times wanted to trump Bob, Bob Woodward's new book, so the Times is beating the Post, and all the attention was diverted from Woodward to the Times. So instead of looking at, at Woodward's totally fictional book, right. which is in itself baloney, then we're all now looking at this article, which is itself baloney. Here's the most you can say about it. Some gutless coward thought they would be clever announcing that they have the personal moral authority to overturn the American people, and they will decide which of the president's decisions should be enforced. Now, <clears throat> not the Supreme Court, not the House, not the Senate, some unknown government employee then gets published by the New York Times, who, of course, anoints them as a hero. Yeah. Not a hero. Right. And, we're coward, supposed to, and we're supposed to believe this person? We're supposed to believe this person that won't even put their name to, to what they wrote? And by the way, what gets me, Newt, is all of this hysteria over name-calling in the White House. Meanwhile, no right. hysteria whatsoever about actual wrongdoing at the top of the FBI and the DOJ in the 2016 election. You know, the fact that... Hillary Clinton because was never even investigated. I mean, so much wrongdoing, and no. yet we're, we're hysterical over name-calling. But first of all, it's the wrong narrative. You can't have an anti-left narrative. Uh, that would really be terrible. Right. So anything which affects Hillary, anything which affects the FBI establishment, those shouldn't be covered all that much. But, but t take Woodward's book and the New York Times piece, put him in one, on one box and say to yourself, and I wrote about this in terms of Woodward, what a tragedy. I mean, you have the best economy we've had in a long, long time. You have real progress being made in all sorts of things. You have the most successful shift in the courts in American history. You have the biggest deregulation in American history. If this is dysfunctional, what would Trump be like if he was functional? I mean, <laughs> somebody ought to actually take seriously the question, Given his personality, <clears throat> given the fact he'd never been in public office, look how rapidly he has taken control of the American government where it matters and how rapidly he's moved things. And shouldn't, shouldn't somebody at the Times or the Post be trying to understand what is happening right rather than running around? I mean, these things are like, like a seventh grade gossip group. It's right. as though they all get together, you know, at the cafeteria and gossip. <clears throat> Who cares? Yeah. And by the way, you'll notice people like Mattis and Kelly, four-star generals, say Wood Wood was just false. Mm. Jack Brewer. Yeah. No, this is Jack Brewer. Uh, if you if you look at what's going on with the <laughs> left uh, and the right, I mean, we talk about social justice, right? And if you look almost to each issue, right? You start. You talk about uh, unemployment. You talk about. Four million Americans being taken off food stamps. You talk about real social justice issues. I mean, the president is actually pardoning people. I know you've done a ton of work uh, on prison reform as well. How can this message finally get across? Because the folks that are, are, are complaining, whether you're Cory Booker's of the world and all these people who, who supposedly are for the underserved, right? The president on almost every right. single issue is standing up for these same people. How can the message finally get across? Well, I, that's one of the places where I think the White House, <coughs> excuse me, has to do a better job of communicating. I mean, when you have Van Jones uh, and Kim Kardashian coming into the White House to bring genuine hardship cases, and the President of the United States is paying attention, you know, if this had been Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden, the news media would be falling all over themselves right. with praise. Mm -hmm. Right. But somehow they can't. They can't come to grips with the fact yeah. Donald Trump has done more to help African Americans get jobs than eight years of Obama. That's just a fact. Uh, and the fact is, the president uh, has a whole series of programs underway to rebuild America's inner city. He's going to end up being more effective rebuilding our inner cities than any president in modern history. Yeah. Eventually, I think the average African American is going to say, I don't care what my so-called left-wing leadership says. 
this stuff is working, and I like it. That's what we're hearing from people like Candace Owens, um, uh, among others, uh, because of the numbers, because of the facts of where African American unemployment is. <laughs> you know, the president, Newt, said that uh, this that anonymous op-ed is backfiring. And last night at a campaign rally in Montana, President Trump addressed the issue of impeachment. Listen to this, Newt. They like to use the impeach word, impeach Trump. How do you impeach somebody that's doing a great job? But if it does happen, it's your fault because you didn't go out to vote. Okay? You didn't go out to vote. I'll be the only president in history. They'll say, what a job he's done. By the way, we're impeaching him. <laughs> do you think Democrats are going to overplay their hands here? I mean, impeach the president if they take back the House. That, that's what they want, and that's what largely the, the liberal media wants, too. First of all, they may have given the president the tool to turn out his vote, and if his vote turns out, they're going to lose. Um, I mean, I just did a paper outlining a 2018 campaign that in the next nine weeks could actually lead to an increase in Republican House votes uh, and an, an increase, a huge increase in the Senate. And I think that the Democrats are so out on a limb on, on open borders, on sanctuary cities, on tax increases. I mean, just go down, you know, on government-run health care. Just go down the list. Yeah. And these people are, are living in la-la land. And I don't think the American people are dumb enough to buy this kind of stuff that's impossible to do. One, one of the most consequential midterm elections we've seen in a long time coming up this November. Newt, it's that's good right. to see you, sir. Thanks very much for joining us. Good to be with you. Newt Gingrich there. Thank you.